So did your dad kind of explain everything to you? He said, I said something about school shooting up a school. Did, did you say something about school shooting? Never, I just told him, I don't know what. I maybe they misheard somebody else. I would never say that. I'm just saying. You never ever said. No, you, I swear. I do, just, you, do you use uh, Discord? Discord? Yes, sir. When's the last time you used it? Oh, man, like a few months ago. Really? Was it at Traditions or was it uh, here? No, it was at Traditions because in that Discord account that I had, I had deleted it before. Because before you moved here? Yeah, because I think it got like, it meant a password for it or something. Like I had clicked on a link and somebody had Have you heard anybody on Discord when you were using it say something like that? You remember? Like at that time? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I ever had anybody that. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to get anybody hemmed up, but like, this is some serious stuff. Yeah, like, I know. Oh, he knows how serious it is, trust me. Cause I, I, I'd hate to, you know, my boss was even like, you know, I don't know how old this information is, and if you want to wait till Monday to follow up, I was like, nah, I'd rather do it now, because. So would we. Because God forbid something happened and I didn't yeah. do my job, that'd be, that, I, I'd feel mm -hmm. pretty bad about that. So I just want to make sure you understand that if, if something like that happened or you hear something like that, yeah, yeah, tell, tell your dad, tell and teacher. I, I, like whatever. I told him, I would promise I would never say something. Like so that. you haven't used Discord in a few months, oh, no, I, I, and you're 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 saying you didn't say anything like that. No, the only thing I have is TikTok, but I just go around there and watch videos. Okay. The investigation continues into the Georgia high school shooting. We are learning more about the suspected shooter's family and his past. Our team is standing by with the very latest. Jeff Harris joining us with how to tell if a young person is merely troubled or a legitimate threat to their community. But first, Ryan Smith joins us at the live desk with the latest arrest Ryan made in this case just hours ago. Breaking tonight, investigators just announcing the father of that accused school shooter. Colin Gray is his name. He was arrested, now facing several charges tied to yesterday's mass shooting. They include four counts of involuntary manslaughter and two counts of second degree murder. Authorities now saying he purchased the AR-15 style weapon used in the killings as a Christmas present for his son. Less than two hours ago tonight, we received audio of when he was questioned by deputies last year about previous online threats. Take a listen. Do you have weapons in the house? I do. Are they accessible to him? They are. I mean, there's not, nothing loaded, but they are down. Okay. We, do, we actually, we do a lot of shooting. We do a lot of deer hunting. He shot his first deer this year. Yeah, okay. You know, so... Like, I'm pretty much in shock, to be honest with you. Well... I'm a little pissed off, to be even really honest with you, if that, if that is what was said. Investigators searched the family's home today, finding several documents. Now, they believe the 14-year-old wrote referencing past school shootings. We're also told tonight Colt Gray, that suspect, had only been enrolled in that school district for about two weeks prior to the tragedy. Just hours from now, the alleged shooter expected to make his first court appearance at the county courthouse tomorrow. Well, he will be tried as an adult. For now, he's staying at a juvenile detention center. As of this hour tonight, still no clear motive. Colin Gray, the father of the accused Georgia school shooter, Colt Gray, is being charged for his alleged involvement in the heinous crime and could face up to 180 years in prison. This echoing a similar situation where the parents of Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly were sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison for their role in the shooting that killed four students. Joining us now to discuss is criminal defense attorney and founder of the Illinois-based firm, Greenberg trial lawyer Steve Greenberg. It's great to see you again, Steve. So details of this case are limited, but do you agree with the charges being brought against Colin Gray? What ultimately do prosecutors have to prove? You know, we we don't know all the facts here. Um, we know that they, there were some problems with his son. There were some red flags. We know that he uh, got a weapon for his son, apparently, after those red flags were there. So it's a question of where you want to draw the line in parental responsibility. And without knowing what was there, you know, was his son saying, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do some harm to some people. And then the father bought a gun from maybe you've got uh, more liability. There's sort of more criminal liability in that situation than if the son was just saying, hey, there's people I don't like, you know, I'm going to go beat them up. 
the problem I have with this is when you start criminalizing parenting, where are you going to stop? And then when you start criminalizing parenting, are you going to start criminalizing all of the decisions that people make? There are some similarities with a case in Michigan when the parents of a teen shooter were held partially to blame. You mentioned that responsibility aspect of this and the questions surrounding that. So do you think charging parents for their involvement in their child's crime will in any way act as a deterrent for acts of mass violence in schools? I don't think it's going to act as a deterrent because I think that it's such antisocial behavior that it's more of a mental health problem. Uh, I think it's a bigger question of why are people buying guns for 14 year olds? And that's uh, something that's a much larger issue where people think that that's something that they should be giving to, giving to their kids. You know, we had that situation in Chicago where uh, there was a mass shooting and someone was buying a, a weapon for their child who was only 16 or 17 years old at the time. Why are people buying firearms for children that are of that age? We don't let kids do a lot of other things at that age. Why do we feel that they can have weapons like this? So I think it's a bigger issue. Anytime you've got a mass shooting, it's not really something that you're gonna be able to stop because the reason people commit crimes like these are, are far more deep seated than than just a normal crime, than just a normal robbery. There are always bigger mental health and social issues. If you look at the people who commit these crimes. Mental health is certainly uh, such a huge issue in this country and something that always comes up. Criminal defense attorney Steve Greenberg, thank you for joining us tonight on The National Desk. And tonight, the nation continues to grieve with a Georgia community shaken by a deadly school shooting. Ryan Smith is at the live desk with how the district Ryan is coping with the unspeakable tragedy. Yes, yeah, certainly a tough day they will never forget. There will be no Friday night lights at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia this week. Their football game now canceled as that community mourns the four lives taken during Wednesday's deadly shooting there. Steady stream of community members in Winder visiting what is now a solemn place, paying their respects throughout the day today to the four lives lost. 14-year-old Mason Shermahorn, Christian Angelo, also just 14 years old, and the two teachers in that school, Christina Ermey, were told she was celebrating a recent birthday when she was shot and killed, and that assistant football coach Richard Aspinwall. Now, surviving students sharing stories of bravery today. Coach Aspinwall on the ground shot by the classroom doorway, we are told. He tried to actually crawl back to his students in what they are calling a final effort to protect them. And tonight we're learning about the two school resource officers on campus who helped take down the accused shooter and take him into custody. They are Tanner Good and Brandon King. You see their pictures on your screen here. Both officers there have extensive backgrounds in school threat training. They have nearly 2,000 hours of law enforcement training combined, county and state law enforcement praising their swift actions on that high school campus.